Miriam, you wrote me a while back and uh, you wanted some help. We're gonna have a good start session. And you wanted help with something a bit unusual. It has to do with childhood abuse, has to do with sexual abuse, with some unusual symptoms. Talk about that a little bit, would you please? Mm. So I was sexually assaulted by my cousin, I believe, from the ages of five to 11. But I only have memory from the age of 11. Um, and when I was 24, I was in a train accident where I was hit by a train and my, and my pelvis broke. And as a result of the pelvis breaking, it damaged um, the positioning of my organs. And it feels to me very connected um, that the, the amount of time, the length of time that I was being um, messed about with by my cousin and the later rage that I felt um, towards my parents in particular for not protecting him. So I ran away from home well, when I was 15. Well, for not protecting him or protecting you? I said him, I said him, but I meant me. Yeah, okay. I, I right. meant me. Um, and, I'm, and maybe in a way him as well, because he was, he would have been 12 or, or 13 when I was five, when it started. So he was also a child that was living with us and, um, in my eyes, should have been protected. Um, well, if I remember our previous conversation of that, he was mm. nine years older than you, which would have made him 14. Mm. Okay, yeah. And you're at your age five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I understand that the, the train accident, mm. we'll talk about that as mm. well, but let me go back to your cousin for, okay. the, for the moment. So, you know, we've had discussions on this prior to this recording. And, and uh, your cousin apparently was at age 14, his voice is changing, he's coming into puberty, it was, you know, his, his sex drive is starting to mature, mm. probably it's up and running big time by that time, <laughs> etc. cetera. Mm. And so any young man, young woman for that matter, is curious about, mm. they have a sex drive that's starting and all of that, it sort of comes with the package. We're not yeah. excusing his behavior, but we do want to get to the point where we understand it because we're going to need to let go of some of mm. this. That would be one mm. of our, our goals. Yeah. So talk now again about protecting him. Say it again. Yeah, protecting him. So he was living with us because he had kidney issues and his mother was in India and so his mother sent him to the UK to live with us whilst he would get treatment and be on dialysis and could go to school um, and so I guess from that perspective the way I've come to see it is that he was also a child he was disconnected from his mum I know that my mum was having a really difficult time with me and then my little brother that came along, her mental health wasn't great. Um, and so I guess with, through that sort of slip of tongue, like, yeah, I feel like both of us weren't protected. Um, I certainly wasn't protected by him and I feel like he could have been looked after a lot better too. Well, okay. Maybe he looked after, I, I just want to make sure I, I, mm. I get the understanding well. Looked after him being looked after. Mm. Is another way to say that him being properly supervised? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, and loved. Oh, and loved. Because I remember my mom not treating him so great. You know, okay. like. And he separated from his own. Yeah mother in this case yeah he's got dialysis which means you've got to sit there and sit on a machine and kidney issues and all of that mm -hmm. that's i'm trying to put myself in his shoes for the moment mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. not excusing the behavior we're trying to understand mm -hmm. it okay um 
But if he, he's got to go on a dialysis machine for a few hours a week, typically that's, mm-hmm. that was the case. Mm-hmm. A young, from what age do you think? Uh, I would have thought from when he first arrived, I'm not really sure. Okay. But for many years anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. The likely self-talk within himself is there's something wrong with me. I'm defective. Yeah. And you, you got to sit on a machine. Other people don't. You know, my body doesn't work well. I'm defective. Something's yeah. wrong with me, etc. Yeah. I'm also hearing I need love, which everybody needs love. I don't care whether they have dialysis, mm. whether male, female, or whatever age they are. Mm. They need love. But he's now not in connection daily with a main source of love being mother. Mm-hmm. Yes. And he mm-hmm. has a very critical, your mother mm-hmm. person. And so it's very easy. Again, I'm not excusing the behavior. Okay. It's very easy to look for love and sex is a way of, a way of acceptance, a way of connection, mm-hmm. a possibility to get love albeit maybe not the best avenue but i'm guessing Mm -hmm. uh in his perception maybe the only avenue available would i be right absolutely yeah yeah okay now what i'm doing with this conversation we call it reframing and you're Mm -hmm. a therapist and you're familiar with all that but we're trying to look at this Mm -hmm through proper eyes, through healing eyes, because yeah. ultimately, well, let me ask you, I don't want to impose mm. this. Mm. Would you see your own forgiveness of this as therapeutic for you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. 100%. You use the, you use the comment earlier in our conversation of rage. I think you were using it regarding your mother. Yeah. But would you use it also regarding your cousin? No, not anymore. Um, That's not alive. I used to have a huge amount of rage. I plotted my revenge in so many ways in my 20s. Um, But, you know, more recently I've come to, I've come to realise I, I was take. I could feel that moment when I decided I wasn't going to be another female that hurt him, and that I made that decision to allow him to do whatever he wanted to me. And you mean between five him. and eleven, or after eleven? No, between five and eleven. Um, yeah. So one of the regression therapies that I had, I I I, I, I found the first ever time it happened and could feel in my system making that decision that I would be the one to look after him. Um, so you, okay, that's, thank you for that input. So you have the perception that even mm-hmm. at your age, five to 11, very, very young age, mm-hmm. you had the perception that you could help him mm-hmm with his own through the avenue of his own sexual desires yes okay now let me ask you this i'm not female so i don't know what happens with a female at age five to eleven okay but we're dealing with your own pleasure zones Mm -hmm. so my question to you is and i know you don't have complete memory here Mm. but Was there something about this as you were saying, well, even though I'm helping my cousin, it doesn't feel so bad. Or or were you really have angst about it, anger about it, regrets? I think it feels to me that I was um, compliant because it felt caring. It felt loving. It felt close. It felt safe he was somebody that i saw as my brother so it didn't 
feel wrong until I was 11 and the penny dropped that it, this wasn't normal. And 11, I didn't hear quite until 11 and then there was a word and I didn't get it. The penny dropped. Oh, um, the penny dropped. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so something but, happened all of a sudden now this is bad. Yeah. Okay. But in the meantime, 5 to 11, I'm also hearing, I'm, and again, I'm trying mm. to get the mm. foundation here well. Mm. I'm also here because your mother is quite critical. In fact, from our previous mm. conversations, you are terrified of her, have rage, et cetera, because of her mm -hmm. criticisms, beatings, and one thing and another. Mm -hmm. That your cousin now, although perhaps inappropriately, becomes a source of love for you. Exactly. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, the rest of the world, society may look upon that and say, oh, what's all that about? But they're wrong. <laughs> okay. That's, at least from my, from my head, that's you and him each mm. seeking out sources of love, which is something everybody does in their own way. And this happened to be the avenue. Yeah. Now, always correct me. I don't want to impose anything. No, it's, 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 it is absolutely correct. It's uncomfortable, but it's how it is. Okay. All right. All right. Well, we're reframing. We're reframing. Yeah. But can you tell me now at age 11 and the penny dropped and you mm -hmm. had a switch, can you, mm -hmm. get, can you get more specific about what happened? Why that switch? I was in a school assembly and we had the Samaritans. I don't know if you have the Samaritans. We, it's a child, um, it's like Childline, a charity for children. Um, and you can telephone them if you need support for any reason. And they did an assembly and was talking about some of the reasons um, one might want to call them. And then they talked about child abuse and neglect and paedophilia. Um, and actually, I remember when, the, when they said paedophilia, I literally felt my world crash because it was the recognition that that was what was happening to me. Okay, so you've suddenly, my terms, okay, mm. always correct, correct mm -hmm. them. Um, you suddenly shifted to a perception of, oh, this is wrong, this is pedophilia, and I'm on the wrong end of this. Mm. Am I saying it well? Would you say it otherwise? Yeah. No, that was it. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I literally went from being a, a really sensible, quiet, um, good girl to that evening being at this youth club and screaming and throwing a chair at the window and throwing what out the window? Throwing a chair at the window oh, and really? then needing to be needing to be restrained and then eventually the police were called. Well, that would be in the category of rage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. But just to be clear, that rage, mm. if you can recall it, I know it's a mm -hmm. while back. Mm -hmm. Was mm. it directed at your cousin and all those activities, or was it also directed at your mother and your life in general? I don't even know what it was directed at. It was like confusion. It was a mess. It was, I can't make sense of the world. I don't understand the world. It was a feeling that had no words, that had no sense attached to it. It was an outburst of, I can, I can put an adult spin on it, but when I remember how that was, it was like it was something that I couldn't control. And it didn't have any focus of direction. It was just like okay. a ball of energy that needed to be expressed. Well, okay. As you were saying that, mm -hmm. I noticed you swallowed. You seemed to have a little intensity about talking about it. I can be mm -hmm. wrong on that. Mm -hmm. um, but as you were saying that, were you, were you getting worked up about it maybe um <laughs> i can feel that toughness to swallow yeah it's a moment that i tend to wash over when i talk about to others um 
I'm yeah. guessing. I'm guessing it's not really resolved. I'm guessing. Mm. I'm guessing you have to tell me. Okay, you're the mm-hmm. you're the, you're the therapist here, much more so than I. You've been you've been at it a long time. Are you repressing it? You just don't want to look at it. Uh, you've swept it under the rug and hoped it went away. Maybe I've swept it under the rug and hoped it went away in some way. Okay. Because you talk about it in forgiving type of ways. Yes, I see that that was the two of us looking in our mm. conversation, two mm. of us looking for love. Mm. And yes, and I was caring. It was a caring thing to do. Mm. Let me get behind that again. Just, just, mm. just so we're com- mm-hmm. complete and more thorough. A caring thing to do. Now, I'm not you. I'm not your body. I don't have your sexual pleasure apparatus and all mm. that stuff. Okay. Mm-hmm. At that age. But I'm imagining the possibility that this is a this you like this physically, sexually, and to call it caring is an excuse for it. Now that's me getting way out there. Is that anywhere close? No. No, that doesn't feel true. Okay. I don't think that I experienced pleasure until much later on it feels more like I was just doing, I was just receptive and available because he needed me. And later on, pleasure might have developed through my five, six, seven year old body, but that I'm quite clear that that wasn't what I wanted. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, or just exploring. And it's good. It's good that yeah, you yeah, always, yeah. always correct me. Uh, people are tempted to somehow go along with me sometimes, uh, yeah. but that doesn't take us any place. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because yeah. that'll just put us down some yeah. avenue that's not going to go where we need it. It's going to be useful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, this rage at age 11 the assembly you had, the pedophilia realization mm. and so on. Was it a one-time rage or you that was just with you for the next few, several months, years or what? So it came out once and then it was repressed until I was about 14, I think, 13, 14. Um, and it started to come back out again. Um, at that age because he left the house and then started to come back to the house and at the point when he started to be allowed back into our family home was when the rage started up again okay. so it was a it was a one-time rage and then I was really concerned that I'd done something wrong and I my mother was really upset and I needed to really make sure she was okay and want it to be a good girl again really and truly so your mother learned you told your mother about all this or so the um youth club that i was at where i threw the chair they um talked to me and managed to get out that something wasn't right at home so then the police were called and the social workers were called and so from there yeah, it, from there it all came out and then my mother and father were told and he had to leave the house and was sent to live uh, with an aunt. Okay. All right, let's shift from there for the moment mm-hmm. to the train wreck. T- train wreck at age 24. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. You got hit by a train. Were you standing on the track? I mean, uh, did you, yeah. What happened? So we were, it was, it was actually my leaving party. I was actually 25. Um, It was my leaving party and I'm going to call him my soulmate, really good friend of mine, was very excited that we were finally going out uh, to a club together. He was six foot two. He picked me up in his excitement. I'm five foot one and he swung me around, lost his balance and fell and as he fell, the train was pulling into the station. Um, and so it was an underground train. And luckily for me, the train was already slowing. We were at the end of the platform. Um, but my friend Goose was killed. 
and I was in hospital for seven months. A month of that, I was in intensive care. All right, and you, your pelvis was broken, mm -hmm. okay. and that had effect on your organs. On the positions of the organs, yeah. Yes, yeah. including including one of the physical symptoms you would like to have relieved, which mm. is your. I hope I say this right. Well, you, you say <laughs> it, your cervix and talk. Yeah. So describe it. Okay. So I broke my pelvis and my sacrum and have loads of nerve damage. And be, then because of the way the, the pelvis um, holds all the organs and the way it was reattached, my organs have started to slip. Um, and that can happen as a natural processing of, of, of age, um, that a woman's organs might start to lose their natural place in the body. Um, but for me, it's structural because of the accident. And so my my womb and my cervix is slipping down the vaginal canal and my cervix likes to live outside of me more than I would like. So it hang it hangs outside of you all mm -hmm. the time? Uh, Most of the time, yeah. Most of the time. Well, and so I mean, it's it's, it's visible. It's visible mm -hmm. hanging outside mm -hmm. of you. Exactly. Okay. Uh, like like an inch, two inches, a half an inch? Uh... Mm, about an inch, I would say. Okay. Yeah. All well, right. no, maybe not some, maybe not quite an inch, just shy of an inch. All right. Well, something yeah. like that, anyway. Something like that, yeah. Okay. Um, and it, it, that's not where it belongs. Okay. Um, that's not where it belongs. Obviously. Okay. But you also said you have lack of feeling around the pelvis the vaginal mm -hmm. area included mm -hmm. okay yeah all right let me um uh, i pre i'm presuming something here when you talk mm -hmm. to the doctors my guess is but correct me that they're saying there's nothing you can do about that maybe there's some magical surgery we could do or something like that but basically you've got this problem and you're going to live with it uh, mm. Do I have that right? Yeah, or it will get worse and it, my entire womb will fall out of me if I don't have a hysterectomy. If you had a hysterectomy, but the whole problem would go away? Is that their view? I don't think it would make it all go away, no. So it's pointless. As far do as they I'm think concerned. it will go away? Uh, no, it would just solve this temporary issue of, 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 of the cervix. All right. Now, I think in your email or our previous conversation, you said to me something about you believed that it's possible for your own self-healing to correct that. Yes, I do. Talk about that a little bit. Why do you believe that? Uh, just give me some insight, could you? The doctors, the doctors who are supposed to know all this tell you, tell you otherwise. Yes. But yes, you're, yes. you're saying, I, I think somehow that I can, I can because, correct it. Yeah, because I feel like I've seen so much miraculous healing occur in the way physical manifestations are rooted in, in, in emotional trauma that hasn't been resolved and processed. So I want to believe that it's the same for me, but it seems too coincidental that I have a history of sexual trauma um, and, you know, later promiscuity because of, you know, what I went through. It seems too coincidental that the accident damaged me in this particular way, which is all about losing sexual pleasure and sensation and, you know, my actual so that for that reason i believe it can heal absolutely okay i want to tell you a story it's a true story mm -hmm. you may have heard me mention this before someplace in my materials but i want to if you have i want to emphasize it again okay when i was in my 30s i'm 81 at the moment okay when i was in my 30s i began to develop sciatica uh, shooting pains down mm. my leg 
And I went to my I, a good friend, orthopedic surgeon. He took some x-rays of it. And he says, well, your L5 S1 disc is instead of being a 10 in size, by comparison, it's a seven. Mm. And so the things are pinching on nerves and it's going down your leg and, you know, the typical discussion that, mm. that that's a very well-known medical thing. Okay. And he said, time will go on and, and that disc will get worse and worse and worse and worse. And your pains will get worse and worse and worse. And you will eventually, his, his term, beg me for an operation. <laughs> okay. And I, I remember saying something like, the disc doesn't grow back. Oh, no, 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 no. It, it never grows back. It can't. Doesn't happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the white coat telling me. So I believe it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, he went to medical school. I didn't. So I got to live with this thing. And indeed, time went on. And, you know, it, the sciatica would come and go, but it was there too much. <laughs> so I eventually stopped playing tennis. I eventually mm -hmm. stopped jogging and things like that because indeed, you know, I could, you know, that disc was getting smaller and smaller and smaller around. Um, how old was I at the time? 1986. Um, I became more spiritually aware. I'll put it that way. I was, I was starting to reading some spiritually oriented books and this kind of thing. Primarily a course in miracles, if you're familiar with that, are you? Yes, okay. I certainly am. And a few years after that, I, be, I became aware of EFT. I developed EFT, mm -hmm. having learned some other stuff, other places and so on. And the idea that emotional issues have something to do with your physical stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we were tapping and all of that in, the, in those earlier years, not involving our unseen therapist as we, as we do now. So um, I never aimed any of that, the tapping or EFT or anything, at my degenerated L5-S1 mm -hmm. disc. Never did that. Okay. Because I believed that was, it was going to be a problem and it was impossible to take care of okay yeah. but i did aim at emotional issues and i went from somebody who was this hard driving businessman and nah, nah, nah. <laughs> you know with 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 stomach problems and everything else because of it because <laughs> someone was going oh wait a minute i can be more peaceful than that you know and and i gradually got more peaceful and more peaceful and i let go of a bunch of stuff that i thought was important mm -hmm. And I wasn't realizing it, but the sciatica was gone. Mm -hmm. And I found myself, I didn't bother playing tennis again, but jogging, you know, which is not supposed to be good for the like, da, 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 da. And, you, you know. yeah. and my back issues faded. They weren't supposed to. So I got curious and I had an x-ray done. This was like, I don't know, eight or 10 years ago now. They took an x-ray of it. Instead of it being a three, which I'm sure I didn't have, I had an x-ray at seven, but I'm sure it mm -hmm. went down to <laughs> way down because mm. it was getting worse and worse and worse. Mm. They took an x-ray of it. And it was like an eight or nine. It had wow. actually regenerated. Supposed to be impossible, at, at least in medical terms. Okay. And I, I have no problem with my back. I haven't had for years. I still jog and go up and down hills and all kinds of stuff and i have zero zero problem with my back my sciatica or anything like that zero wow okay um i don't even have a, a discomfort i have nothing all right i've given you that story mm. to give you some sense of non-medical means to take care of physical issues, like even the impossible. Sorry to take so long. And I think what I'm really doing is just, is just giving you validation for your own view, but I wanted to do that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That's really good to hear. Yeah. I've seen other things like that, by the way. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So that doesn't mean in our session we're going to have today that we're going to somehow do something magic and the server's going to go back up inside and stay there and, and your whole pelvis is going to change and shift and everything else all in one session. What we're going to try to do is do a good start for that. Mm -hmm. So I've been exploring some stuff, some sexual possibilities, mm -hmm. you know, train possibilities, and so on. Rage issues, mm -hmm. even repressed rage issues, <laughs> <laughs> and see where we can go. So let me ask you, um, as far as your intuition tells mm -hmm. you, what is the emotional cause? Well, let me say, I, I got to tell you one more thing first, mm. one more thing first. More stories, okay, but this mm, is important. Okay. I've had many occasions where people will come to me with some physical ailment that will not heal. You're mm. now coming to me with a pelvic thing, mm. a cervix thing that will not heal, okay? Yeah. One of my classic stories I need to tell you. Young man came to me, this was years ago. I was still doing tapping, no unseen therapist at the time. He had sprained his ankle. He was like 20 years old. He was a basketball player and couldn't play basketball because the sp a sprained ankle usually takes, you know, three, four, five, six, seven days, you know, before you can get back mm -hmm. and play typically. Okay. But this, this was like three weeks later and it was still f a fat ankle. So we did some tapping, even though I have a fat ankle and all <laughs> no, pl <laughs> no place. That's when I first began to ask, well, would there be an emotional issue? Maybe what was happening emotionally around the time you sprained your ankle? Oh, his girlfriend dumped him. Okay. Mm. Oh, heavy, heavy. My girlfriend dumped. We dealt with that. Bring him some peace on that. And then within two or three days, he was back on the basketball yeah. court. Shh. Yeah. It's as though the emotional issue stops healing from happening. Mm, mm. Now, that's not in the medical books anywhere. Mm. But, you know, things heal. Norm Injuries tend to heal. Cut yourself, it tends to heal. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, I've, all, I've had numerous occasions where people have been in accidents and they go to a rehab center and the rehab place has some exercises to rehab them and uh hold on a minute to rehab them um well i, I got interrupted there uh oh. oh 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 and the and the the rehab doctors say well it's going to take you six months or nine months or something and all this we'll do some eft with it aiming at emotional issues and the time typically gets cut in half Mm -hmm. okay yeah that's just more stuff okay so with that in mind mm -hmm. we're working under the assumption your pelvic stuff should heal normally and there's yes. some emotional issues in the way somehow all yeah right. all right preaching to the choir in a sense but i wanted to make sure that was out there it's reframe and all of that okay now your intuition please Mm. If there was an emotional issue or a specific event or anything in that category mm -hmm. that is keeping your pelvis from and related organ stuff mm -hmm. from healing, what would it be? So what's coming is um, feeling unloved and repressed rage. Uh, feeling unloved and repressed rage. All right. Talk about more feeling unloved. This is a mother thing. It's a general thing in your life. No, it's a mother thing. Yeah. Um, at the time of the accident, I had 
decided that I didn't care about my parents anymore. Um, and I really believed that they didn't love me. Um, and I have this specific event where I remember walking into my mother's place of work, really excited to go and meet with her, to see her, surprise her, to say hello. And um, I saw her and she was with a colleague and she was very surprised to see me. And I introduced myself to her colleague as her daughter and her colleague said, oh, I thought you only had one daughter referring to my baby sister. Um, and my mother was really um, embarrassed and was like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is my older daughter. And I took that as a real slap in the face. Um, I mean, I was, yeah, 24 at the time, 25, and felt so much rejection because it was at a point where I was just starting to heal or repair my relationship with them, having run away from when I was 15. Um, and if my memory serves me correctly, it was a few months after that that the accident happened. Okay, this is before the accident yeah okay so let me put my words around it just so i got it mm -hmm. all right yeah so you've had you've had a past history with your mother anyway of criticisms beatings and so mm -hmm. on but now you're gonna you're gonna go talk to her you're excited mm -hmm. to see here there's i'm mm -hmm. hearing some forgiveness some let's let the mm -hmm. past go kind of thing in that mm -hmm. uh and then you get this feedback from the other person as though your mother really has discounted you Mm. that's my term okay mm -hmm. and all of a sudden uh okay mm. big rejection feeling of mm. rejection i'm yes. guessing all the other stuff now came back <laughs> the rage came back yeah yeah okay yes and that somehow influences the accident itself mm -hmm. as though there's a lot of people, people even listening in, don't really believe that we can create our own accidents. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even if we're tail ended by another car, like, you know, mm -hmm. how do we create that? Uh, another says we create everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, it depends on where you're coming from. So we really can't prove that you created the own accident, but we can see reasons why you, we can see possibilities there anyway. Okay. Let me ask you in your own in your own belief system and all of this. Mm -hmm. On a scale of zero to ten, what is the likelihood that you created that train wreck yourself? Oh, ten. Oh, a ten. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. And in co-creation with the person that I fell with. In co-creation, meaning he created it as well? That he was somehow involved in it, like it wasn't, yeah, like we're all connected, we're all one, so yeah. okay. his involvement in it meant, yeah. All right. Mm. Would it seem reasonable within your belief system that if we could at least get a good start, on this rage and hence the creation, not only the accident, but the pelvic stuff. Mm -hmm. But that would be a solid entryway into correcting the whole problem. Yeah. Yeah, I can feel it all in my system. My all right. body saying yes. Would the centerpiece be of it be this one incident going to your mother and the other person saying what they said? I think so, yes. And yeah, and I do, do you remember I said I'd worked on it a bit and I got relief for two or three days? That uh, was I, the no, incident I worked again. on. Say that again, if you would, Miriam. Uh, so, so I've worked on it once. I went to that specific event and it, I, I did the OEFT then. And it was then that my pelvis, sorry, my cervix went up for about two oh, days. I remember yeah. it going up. I don't remember it being yeah. that event. It was that event, yeah, that I worked on. Oh, 
well, that's a good clue because you've done some work with it already and you had mm. at least temporary result. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that means that that's a good clue that we're, we're you know, walking through the right door mm. or a good door, whatever. Yes. So, so now you, now you got me excited. So. <laughs> 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 um, I'm going to do something with you. It's not unusual. I've been doing it more often recently. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring an unseen therapist. We're going to aim at this specific event and all that it represents. But we're going to do it in a way rather than me narrate all this, bring an unseen therapist and hopefully try to fix you. Okay. Mm -hmm. At least the emotional responses to all these things. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it jointly. Yeah. It's going to be three way, you, me, and unseen therapist. All right. Love is best when shared. So we're going to, we're going to capitalize on our connection now okay our friendship now and while i'm going to like guide all of this be the master of ceremonies so to speak mm -hmm. okay and start narrating stuff your participation which is encouraged is not required by the way but it's, it's encouraged is if we're as we're doing this something else shows up another mm -hmm. thought, another mm -hmm. avenue, another whatever it is, speak up. Okay. Give us the opportunity to integrate it within what we're doing because it may move us in directions rather than me. Mm -hmm. Me just doing it has been very successful in lots of ways, lots of, et cetera. You'll see that in, in your advanced course you're taking and everything else, but we're going to go a step further. Okay with you? Perfect. Yes, okay. sir. So I want to get a, a before on this specific event. I know you've repressed it, swept it under the rug, maybe, and all of that. Mm -hmm. But we're going to try to bring it up and see how intense it really is. Okay. To begin with. Now, you may or may not be successful in this because you've got reason not to go there because it's painful. Okay. Okay. But so just do your best. Close your eyes for me. Go back to the event. There you are. Happy to see your mother. The other person says what they say. And get into your emotional response and give me a zero to 10 number. Your current zero to 10 number, not what it was then, what it is now. Would you remember it? It's a zero. There's no charge currently. Well, I'm it's here. A, mm, go ahead. Go on. Yeah, go no, ahead. it's um, it's that that kind of curiosity again, where I'm looking at my mum curiously, like, like I wonder why you would do that, as opposed to there's there's no um. Yeah, there's no current charge. Well, my intuition says there's a big current charge. Okay, but okay, it doesn't make me right. It does not make me right. It does not make me right. Um, I was expecting you to start saying eight, nine, something like that, and I was going to ask you if there's any physical things in your mm -hmm. body that was going along with that, and but you're giving me zero. Can I say something to that? Yeah. I, I would like to trust that and go with that because what I've been doing with my personal pre procedure is even if I don't have a current charge on memories, I've still been going to them. And what I've been finding is that the charge then comes up as the unseen therapist comes in because they're repressed. So I'd, 
quite like to trust your intuition of that. All right. Feels good. Okay. I want to add a little something more in there Mm -hmm. if I can. Um, When we have a repressed zero, which I'm, is a possibility in this case. Mm -hmm. All right. And another measure is just less accurate, but it's a, it can be useful. Yeah. Is, can you give me a zero to 10 on what you felt at the moment it actually happened? Not currently, but yeah. at that moment. Yeah. Um, oh, at the moment, at the, at the time, it would have been a 10. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a little note. But also, I, I, I'm just checking you, you probably know this, but this is the one that I worked on already. So there is a possibility that the zero is because I worked on it. Yeah. My intuition says no. Um, okay. A lot of people work on things, but they're, they're still beginners at this, and there's so such yeah. deep stuff involved yeah. that they really don't get down to what's really there, and they don't. Their system does not want to look at it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you you know that from being a therapist. People do not want to look at their issues. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're not criticizing. It's just what we do mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. i don't want to look at that one you know mm-hmm. so it's okay mm-hmm. all right you're calling it a 10 then yes a zero now but i'm going to say an eight or nine now because that's my mm-hmm. intuition i'll just put that up and we'll see what we'll see what happens okay yeah all right okay so if you would go we'll bring an unseen therapist by the way, she's been listening all the time. All right. She doesn't, she's not out having a sandwich. She's always here. Okay. <laughs> so close your eyes. Take a nice, deep, relaxing breath. Okay. And uh, just as a way of inviting officially the unseen therapist, just recall some simple, loving moment in your life and just nod your head whenever you're there. All right, good. And that's just an invitation. The unseen therapist has a level of love. She's pure love, which is beyond what you and I can experience here in this illusionary separate world. So we're going to borrow from her. She's very willing, of course, to share her love and so on. Love heals everything. Love is the ultimate healer. And so we're just letting her know by this recalling a loving moment that we're trying to align with her as best we can. She understands that great. We're going to give her a little something to work with and let's see what happens. So now shift your focus. Go back to this. You were at about age 24 at the time. Here you're excited to see your mother. And you see her, she's with a colleague. And the colleague says, what does the, tell me, give me the words again. What does the colleague say? I didn't realize you had another daughter. I didn't, I'm going to write that down. I didn't realize you had another daughter. Or you didn't tell me, you didn't tell me you had another daughter. Something like that. Well, I'll write that down. You didn't tell me you had another daughter. Now, we're not so interested in what the other person said. That we're not so interested in the details of the specific event. We're interested in your response to it. So your response to it currently is a zero. But at the time, I think you used the word rage. Would you talk about that a little bit? At the time. At the time, it's like my internal world crashed and I felt old rage heat back up and like um, 
it's not disappointment but it's like a much more extreme version of disappointment like just my heart crushed my heart broken um and rage with shame was shame is that the right word mm. that's a word we haven't used before that at least as i recall it mm. okay. like embarrassment like oh so i'm not worth your eldest daughter and i'm not your nobody knows about me nobody knows i exist i'm not worthy mm. i'm not lovable yeah all right at the time, you if you me. can recall it, if you can recall it at the time, were you having any physical symptoms? Was the heart pounding, for example, or you were sweating or any other physical things you can think about? I can, I, I can imagine my heart would have started pounding quite fast and I would have felt hot. I'm making a note here. Is your heart pounding at all now? It's not pounding, but it's a little faster. All right. Are you feeling more heat or hot now? My room's actually quite cold, unfortunately. But um, I'm feeling tense, actually. I'm really feeling tense. That's what I'm feeling now. On a scale, Which, of, on a scale of zero to ten, how tense? Like an eight tense. Oh. Okay, well, perhaps we were correct that there's more to this than the zero that you were talking about. Because mm. now you're and talking, the, you're talking about, it and you're currently feeling an eight tension. Yes, like the t the tension is um, like a frozen tension, like it's like <gasps> like that, like it's tight, it's like hot, stuck, it's holding everything in. It's got nowhere to go. It's what it feels like holding stuff in. Mm. Okay. Am I hearing am I hearing correctly that holding it in is I don't really want to look at this because they're gonna to be too painful. No, more that that's how I think a part of me was at the time. Like, like, oh my god, what's just been said? I don't exist, I'm not wanted. That's really embarrassing. My mom doesn't like me. I need to get out of here. All right. Well, I'm talking about the current tension you're feeling. Mm. The current tension. Yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah, that's just how my body is now. That's how it currently All right. Yeah. All right. Well, we don't really know what causes that tension. We can just take reasoned guesses at this moment. Okay. So what we're going to do this is a very standard thing. It's even written in my book. We do a very, very standard addressing of this current tension in your body, whatever the cause may be. And with the awareness that something else may occur as to what that tension may be. It may be what we suspect. It may be something else. But with that, with that realization, something might occur. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to represent this tension in your body metaphorically as an unwanted vibration around your heart. Ta -ta, ta -ta, ta -ta, ta -ta, like that. Okay. And unseen therapist sees this. And in your imagination now, you can allow her to send a gentle cooling, healing breeze into your body, surrounding your heart, ta -ta, ta -ta, ta -ta, like that. And that tension, that unwanted vibration around your heart cannot survive with all that love because there's understanding in it. This is yesterday's stuff. This is somebody else's view of things. Your response doesn't really need to be this way. It is expensive for you and so on. So what happens is in your imagination, that cooling breeze makes the tension, the unwanted vibration around your heart to fade. goes ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. Okay. Now, 
Let's go through that again. Here's this tension we think having to do with this particular thing, this particular interface with your mother and a colleague. It could come from stuff way back or other places, but there it is. Ta 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 ta. The cooling breeze. Ta 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 ta. So now repeat that a time or two or three or whatever you want until you've gone as far as you think you can go, whatever, whatever that may be. And when you do, just say, okay, I'm done. Keep your eyes closed and we'll proceed. Mm -hmm. All right. So there's another memory that's popped in. Oh, that good. Is okay. Quite here. So I'm 13 or 14. And it's the moment that my rage came back. Um, and it's when my cousins came back to, um, he was allowed back in the house. And, um, but obviously I wouldn't speak to him. And um, my brother asked my mum why we don't speak. And um, she got embarrassed. And so she took my mum, my, my cousin and me aside into the front room. And, um, and she said that we have to start speaking because um, people are noticing that. We, we wait, 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 I'm, I'm missing it. Have to start speaking because what? Because people are noticing that we are not speaking. Um, so we need to speak. My cousin and I need to speak. We need to be normal. We need to put behind what we've gone through. And then she left the room. And my cousin pushed me up against the wall and um, groped my bottom and said that it took two to tango. You said that it takes two to tango. Yeah. Okay. And then he left the room. All right. I'm hearing near tears in this. Am I correct? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we are 10 yeah. I'm really fine. We are 10 Yeah. 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 Okay. Now let's get behind it. Good. Really good. Really good. We've, we, we may well have something more foundational still than the colleague thing. This is important. Okay. So he gropes your bottom, it takes two to tango. That's a, a somewhat aggressive sexual move. Uh, yes? Yeah. Okay. Your emotional response now about that. Are you angry? Are you humiliated? Are you puzzled? What? Um. I feel hurt and let down by my mom. But leaving me with him. Okay. <laughs> Behind that is a to me, perhaps, a broader label that says, I'm not good enough, I'm defective, I'm not lovable, something's wrong with me, <laughs> things in that basket, does that fit? Yeah. That fits sort of, that fits like a 10? It's, that... it's I'm not lovable, I'm not important to you i'm not special okay open your eyes for a minute if you would <clears throat> this is uncomfortable for you i know but i think we're getting someplace does it feel oh, okay it feels it feels good to have connected with it yeah okay um we'll go back to unseen therapist in a little bit, but I want to, mm -hmm. I want to do some reframing if I can. Mm -hmm. And we may have discussed this 
in a previous thing we talked about, but I want to go over it again if we did. If um, your mother, mm -hmm. why would she be as critical and and administer beatings to you and behave in the way that she behaves? What would motivate her? to do that? Because she didn't know any other way. She well, I'm looking, any other way. I'm wondering more about her background. I'm, oh, I'm, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm presuming her background did not have a lot of love in it, maybe a lot of criticism itself and so on. Do you know about that? Um, her background was actually, her father died when she was really young and um, she was left with my mum and was actually very well loved. Um, but she had me when she was uh, 17, 18, and she'd just come to this country, and so she didn't have any support. Yeah, I so remember she, that. Yeah, so she was very emotionally... She was a child when she had me. Um, Did she try to abort you? No, oh, okay. but she didn't know whether my sense is she didn't know who the father was when she when I was in her belly and so that made life very confusing for her yeah well typically when when somebody behaves this way towards children I see it so mm -hmm. often so I'm just I have to presume this okay mm -hmm. it's because there's a big unlovability within her there's a lot of unrest yeah. within her guilt within her that comes from wherever it comes from. I don't know this, and maybe you don't either, okay? Mm -hmm. But people develop these things, but the, all this unrest inside, we either have to resolve it, you know this as a therapist, okay? Mm -hmm. Or we project it out there. It's like if we can project it, we can blame, we can criticize, we can beat, we can whatever, mm -hmm. then we seemingly get rid of it. But it's only temporary. It'll be back in an hour or tomorrow or mm -hmm. something. But it's for now, we can get rid of it, okay? Blame you. And who, who, who more convenient to blame than children? Because mm -hmm. they, they don't fight back. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not criticizing your mother. We don't blame your mother. Nor do we excuse, do we excuse the behavior. We're trying to understand it. Mm -hmm. I've used that phrase before, but it's very important. It's a very good step towards actual mm -hmm. true forgiveness. Yeah. yeah. So would I be would I be correct in assuming that your one of your mother's biggest needs, if not her biggest need, would be love? 100%. You said 100%? A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here's someone who, again, correct me if I don't say it right, mm -hmm. that doesn't know what love is in a way, doesn't know how to give it. Would I be correct on that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So yeah. if you want to get love from your mother and your mother behaves with this cousin incident at your age, 13 or 14, you know, this is embarrassing. You guys speak to each other and she's mm -hmm. not looking out for you and so on. Mm -hmm. And you feeling not lovable. Mm -hmm. I just tried to paraphrase everything that we said. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, mm -hmm. on, I'm on target. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's like trying to ask a rock to give you some water. Hmm. Yeah. The rock doesn't have any water in it. The rock can't give you any water. You can, but you, you should say, well, the rock should give me water. Okay, that's still my not belief. Give you water. <laughs> What's that? It's still, it's still not going to give you water. No, it's not going to give you water. And if your mother does not know how to give love, doesn't maybe not even know what love is, or has just such little interface with true love. Mm -hmm. Hold on one second. Somebody's trying to sell me something. Hold on a minute here. Oh, dear. <clears throat> OK. 
interesting. We were interrupted by the phone. but So if somebody like your mother doesn't know what love is, but, but you very naturally presume mother's supposed to be a source of love, she's not giving it to you. Therefore, you're not lovable. There's something wrong with that logic. Am I right? Mm -hmm. She doesn't know how to do it. Yeah. And you're looking to her for it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And concluding that because she does, because she's not giving it to you, mm -hmm. that therefore you're not lovable. Yeah. And that hurts. Yeah. Am I being tough on you? No, not at all. <laughs> it's it's how it goes, isn't it? Well, it's a reframe. It's a reframe. Mm, we mm. don't know how well it lands yet. It's you know mm. we can talk about it all day long. Well, that's the yeah. way it is in our head. Yeah. We need exactly. to own the idea. Yeah. We need yeah. to own the idea. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go back with unseen therapists. I'm guided to do a little something else with you that may help here. Mm -hmm. And the whole purpose of this is to help you own the idea mm -hmm. that your mother does not know how to give the love. Mm -hmm. The love really should come, needs to come from within you rather than from outside sources like your mother or a lover or a cousin or something else. Mm -hmm. It needs to come from within rather than search for the rest of us, myself included. We're all looking for love and we look around. Where's my love partner? Where's my, who's going to make me feel special? All of this. Mm -hmm. okay. but that's looking for love out there. And, you know, it may work for a while, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it tatters at the edges sooner or later, typically. All right. Mm -hmm. Maybe some exceptions, but that's the typical thing. So anyway, close the eyes, if you would. We don't need to invite unseen therapists again. She's here. In your imagination. In your imagination. Imagine your mother in front of you. Any age you want to be. There's your mother in front of you. Now, let's go back to a young age, any young age you want to be, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I don't know, somewhere in there. All right. There's your mother. You do not have the maturity at this point, at this young age, to understand what might motivate your mother, where she's coming from. So there she is. An unseen therapist is standing right beside you. She puts an arm around you. It's very loving, very understanding. No criticism ever from unseen therapists. She's just involved with what's really the truth of things, not what people do with it, including your mother and you and me and everybody else. Again, let me urge you, if something else comes up, just always say, okay. So she says, well, take a look at your mother. And there she is. Look at the tension in her body. Look at her gestures. Maybe, maybe tension in her face, in her eyes. Lack of love that may be there. Unrest that is showing up physically. And also in your imagination, notice that within her is a dry love sponge it's like a water sponge which uh, fills up with water overflows and, but it it doesn't take on water it takes on love and it fills up and overflows but hers is empty absolutely empty you on the other hand have a love sponge of your own which from what you've been talking about having some compassion even for mother, but some built-in rage that we've not, we've stepped under the rug and so forth, so forth. You have a bit more of a 
Your love sponge is a bit more filled than hers. But nonetheless, you allow unseen therapists to share her love sponge, which is always overflowing, always overflowing, always sharing, always, 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 always. Let her share it with you, with your love sponge. And spend a few moments now, whatever time it takes, allowing unseen therapist love sponge to fill yours up. Maybe it fills to the top, maybe not. Just do whatever you can do with it. Whenever you've gone as far as you can go there, just say, I'm ready, and we'll proceed. Keep the eyes closed. I'm ready. All right. Um, tell me, were you somewhat successful, very successful what with that with that exercise? Yeah, like I feel like I'm just overflowing with love. Right, good. Yeah. This is a sense. This is a sense of um, generating love from within. We're not used to it. We're conditioned otherwise in this world of separate seemingly separate bodies and so on but now you get a sense of the real love comes from within not from somebody else it gets generated from within not our easiest thing to do because we're not conditioned that way we're not taught that way or anything else but now with this love you've generated your own love sponge there's your mother in front of you with her dry love sponge she may never have experienced love at all, maybe temporarily, maybe sexually here and there, maybe a compliment here and there, but real love, very little, if any, dry love sponge. So your love sponge now is filled. Unseen therapist is filled. You've got plenty. And the more you share it, by the way, the more it grows. Interesting concept. So now you and unseen therapists together share this overflowing love sponge, the love. You don't send it to her, you share it with her, a different concept. And watch her love sponge, maybe for the first time ever, fill up. And in your imagination, as you are now sending your mother love instead of rage. See if you can imagine the tension in her body starting to fade. And the tension in her face softens. The look in her eyes softens. Maybe she has a smile. Maybe she has an awareness, oh, I wish I had had this so many years ago. Oh. And if you can imagine her do it, give it a try. She says to you, Miriam, I love you. I know I haven't exhibited it, but I love you. I know you don't see it. I know you have rage, but I love you. I had you at a young age. I was doing the best I could, even though, you know, some of my behaviors really need to be looked at. But underneath it, I love you. I love you. I mean, I really love you. You never did anything wrong. You're just a girl, a young girl. You did whatever you needed to do. We all do that. 
I love you. I did some of this stuff myself, maybe not just what you did. I don't I'm not sure who the father was. Shame on me in one sense, I guess, but we'll leave that be. I love you. I was just doing what I needed to do. Thought I needed to do. Behind all of that, behind all of that, I love you. So just hear that for a while. And when you've heard that for a while and you want to continue, just say, I'm ready. And we'll go on. Okay. <clears throat> so now let's do something a little bit more with the unseen therapist. Let's represent metaphorically any leftover rage, anger, or any other misgiving about all these issues your mother yourself, your own reactions, your own rage, etc. And let's represent them as your own personal volcano with bubbling lava. It's got an opening at the top and at the bottom is bubbling lava that could erupt. And from time to time has, you even threw a chair out the window at one point, okay? And other things, it's a, sure have occurred from time to time, evidencing this bubbling, raging lava, erupting possibility volcano. And you, this represents your rage, you an unseen therapist now get on a cloud, nice pleasant cloud. And the cloud floats over the top of the volcano. So you can both look down over the cloud, over the edge of, edge of the cloud, and see the bubbling unforgiveness, the bubbling rage, et cetera, that is down there. That is costing you so much in so many ways and may well be keeping your pelvis from healing and the related organs and all of that. And with unseen therapist's help, you transform this cloud. It's still a cloud, but now it's going to send a rain into the volcano, but it's not a rain of water, water type rain. It's a rain of love. It's an I love you that falls from the cloud. It goes down and settles, settles on the bubbling lava, the unforgiveness, the rage, that which needs not be. I love yous are coming down. And while it's not really water, it's sort of like water because what happens now? is that it creates a steam as the love starts to calm the lava. And the steam rises up as the lava cools down, the rage cools down, the steam rises up. And it comes up higher and higher and higher and forms a new cloud, of, a new rain cloud, rain cloud wait, love slash rain cloud above the volcano and below where you and the unseen therapist are. And that cloud then begins to rain more love back down. Here it comes back down, turns into steam, goes back up, more cloud, 
more love rain. Less steam now, because there is no real reason for the rage. Clouds start to dissipate. You look down from your own cloud with the unseen therapist, and you look down, and there is no more bubbling lava. The volcano is extinct. There's no more rage. And you look down in it, and you see inscribed in what in the volcanic rock that was there, the words, I love you. And you look at that for a while. You spend some time with the whole metaphor of the love rain, the moving volcano, the I love you, and so on. And whenever you're done, just open your eyes and we'll, we'll talk. Okay. <clears throat> so were you able to follow along okay mm -hmm. yeah any competing thoughts not at all all right nothing like oh i don't really kind of i don't get this part of it it doesn't really kind of fit so well and what do you mean a volcano there's no volcano none of that <laughs> none of that no no okay well no. just checking just checking so tell me, I'm going to do a little testing here. All right. Well, first of all, do you, do, you do you think there was any success in that? Oh, yeah, the volcano definitely went down. Um, and it was really emotional to share the love with my mum and to feel her hard exterior soften and to feel warm and receptive. And, and when you said, um, I love you, I've always loved you, I, I could feel it as, um, as truth as her words. I know she loves me. Well, to me, to me, the important words you just said, you could feel it, because we're trying to get from an academic mm. discussion of all of this to mm. where you own it. Oh, the tears were the tears of like recognition. Like, yeah, I know she loves me. Okay. Love her. Well, I still want to test. I mean, I, 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 as this course unfolds, you see, I'm a great one for testing because I never want to be fooled by a temporary or partial result. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's go back to this example where your cousin comes back to the house, you're age 13 or 14. Your mother says, you're not speaking, go speak. And then he pushes you against the wall, takes two to tango, you're being assaulted, grabs your mm. bottom, sexually aggressive. Mm. Mother's not helping you. <laughs> mm. You are angry, rageful, and all of that. Mm. Close your eyes and, and run that movie again. And tell me if you're still... Were you an eight? I think you were an eight at the time. Oh, a 10. I it was a 10. Say. Yeah, that's, I just didn't write it down yet. So, okay. I can't feel anything at all, but I wonder if to test it even more, if I could speak it out because it was the speaking it that was yeah. the great, really great, yeah. great way to test. In fact, in fact, what we want to do with this test, if you, if you can, is mm -hmm. to be somewhat animated. Like, like, okay. like, like my cousin shows up and we don't speak for obvious reasons. My mother sees it, she kisses the side and says, you guys, you, know, you can hear the animation of my mm, voice. Mm, mm. He pushes me against the wall. 
grabs my mm. bottom. Okay. Mm. What I'm trying to get you to do is to exaggerate, animate, to try mm. to build up intensity about it. Because if it's there, we want to know it. We want to be thorough. We want to bring mm -hmm. it up. Okay. Okay. Does that work? I think so. I'll do it in a way that feels good for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so my cousin starts coming back to the house for family meals and my brother asks my mum why we don't speak um, and, and it's fairly obvious why we don't speak and she takes me and my cousin into the next room and says, you guys, you need to put your differences aside and just get on with each other and speak. And she leaves the room. She leaves me alone with him. And he pushes me up against the wall and grabs my bottom and says it takes two to tango. So I, yeah, I feel pretty neutral about it. I could feel that it felt difficult when I said, and my mum left. So that moment where my mum like physically leaves us in the room alone together, that felt hard to say. I could feel like a, she left us in the room together, but for sure, like the surge of, there's no surge of emotion or, um, yeah. Um, was that a two, a 10, a, a four, what? So um, a four, I would say. A four. A four. Okay. Now, what yeah. about her? Put words around what gives you the four when she leaves the room. Label the emotion, if you will, or whatever you can do. Um, disbelief that um, that she would leave me alone with him knowing what happened confusion and the fear of knowing what happened what it led to and what it led to yeah meaning grabbing your bottom or yeah um, and and just how that moment fucked everything it feels like it fucked my entire childhood up that moment was where I started to rebel so insanely um because I decided in that moment that she no longer cared and I couldn't trust her and so I chose not to care okay so mm. what you're saying to me now this is what I'm hearing okay yeah is that we went through this exercise mm -hmm. and <clears throat> I would suspect this, by the way, because this is too much foundation here to have it all mm. go away in one, one kind of session. Mm. Okay. So what I'm hearing is something left. This is good that we test. I'm mm. hearing something left over about mm. rage with mother and so on. Mm. It's at a lower level I'm hearing Mm -hmm. but nonetheless it is still there why would she leave you alone you're confused da da mm -hmm. da 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 okay mm -hmm. now that's why we called our session a good start now one of the what I think mm -hmm. always correct me if you think otherwise um, I'm going to send you this recording mm -hmm. I would go over this session again and again and again because mm -hmm. each time you do you're likely to come up with some other angle, some other thing. And with your training, you know, mm -hmm. there are advanced course, you'll be able to take this specific event, that specific event, another one, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. And with this foundation that we just did, this good start, you'll be able to take care of the remnants. Yeah. Now, remnants is my word. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know if it's accurate. Does this thing you're talking about where you actually got a four, mm -hmm. would that be a remnant or please use your words? Um, yeah, it feels like remnants a good word or residue, like the left what's left over. Because I can see how it's, it's, I can see how it's opened up like this pathway of, oh yeah, and I know what that moment led to that because of that, because of that action, it meant that it changed the course of my life. If that moment hadn't have happened, I may have been a very different person. So that feels like an interesting avenue that it's opened up. Okay. That also tells me that's a very central, specific, mm. pivotal, mm. specific event when there's likely to have other pieces to it. Aspects, mm -hmm. we call them, as you, as you learn in our, in our course and so on. Um, so we've been gone on a while here. We've probably gone as far as... You know, your emotional uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, reservoir will take. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's draw the curtain here hmm. now. Good start session. You now with your training know, know how to address the rest of it. Get back to me if you, need, mm -hmm. if you need some more help on that. Does that fit okay? That feels really okay. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you.